Your starting weight was 454 pounds. 312. You have lost 142 pounds. Currently, we are at the Glendale Cemetery here in Des Moines, Iowa, and I'm going to visit the grave of Daniel Wright. He was a contestant on season seven and season eight of The Biggest Loser. I'm imagining that most, if not practically, all of you guys know what The Biggest Loser is. If not, it was a television show that was on for many, many years. Basically, you get a bunch of people who are overweight, obese, whatever you want to call it, and you have a contest on who can lose the most weight. People have an inner nature where when we pass by a car accident, we want to see. We want to see what the cars look like. We want to see if there's anybody on the stretcher. We want to see some, some kind of destruction after waiting in traffic for over two hours. Now, we don't necessarily want somebody to die. I'm not saying that. But human nature is that we gravitate towards bad. We like seeing a train wreck. We like watching people not doing too hot. Because, you know, like they say, bad news is good news. And when we watch television, YouTube, and we hear bad news about people, you know, getting shot, getting killed, getting arrested, a little piece, a little part of us says, wow, at least that wasn't me. Not saying that we enjoy people's downfalls, but we kind of do. But we also, as people, love a redemption story. You could mess up as big as possible, but we all love redemption stories. We feed off of it. We thrive off of it. We can't get enough of it. And that's what the uh, popularity of this television program was basically built off. We're looking at human car wrecks. I'm just going to say it, whatever it is. I'm blunt. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But we want these proverbial car wrecks to redeem themselves. We want to see them transform. We want to see them uh, uh, obtain a, a, a goal, a level of health. And for one 30-year-old Daniel Wright, who tragically passed away back in 2019, he was on that show and he was one of those people that we were looking for a redemption story. So Daniel Wright, at the time, he went on The Biggest Loser. He was on season seven. Now, during the season seven, when he went on the show, he clocked in at around 454 pounds. He's a big boy. Now, he was only on the program for about the first four weeks. And then the biggest loser, you basically get people who are, you know, kind of like Survivor, you're voted off. I guess the people who are holding everybody else back or they're not, uh, you know, pulling their weight, no pun intended. They're not losing the weight that they should be. However, you know, when you're voted off the island, the proverbial island that is the biggest loser, they'll give you a chance to possibly redeem yourself. So I'm assuming the producers knew that they were going to do a the next season of Biggest Loser where they were going to have the losers of season seven of the Biggest Losers have them back on. So, you know, they probably told them, hey, just keep at it, keep losing weight, yada, yada, yada. Or maybe they still hooked him up with personal trainers. I don't know. I wasn't beyond the scenes. But on the uh, one month that he was on the program, he lost, uh, I want to say 60 pounds off the top of my head. That's 60 pounds in a month. That is amazing. I wish I could do that right now. And we've seen that program. And the absolute, I don't want to say torture. That's not the word. But we, we see what they're doing on that program we see these obese people and they're being ran ragged and then you see the buckets you see the people puking in these buckets 
from the time they wake up, whatever that is, to the time they go to sleep, they're doing nothing but working out. That is their job. And they treat it like a job because the ultimate goal at the end of the season is to, well, number one, you wanna lose weight, you wanna get healthy. It's very, very dangerous to have that kind of weight on you. I have a lot of weight on me and it's very dangerous. That's why I'm trying to do something about it now and we all should be trying to do something about it now. But also, you know, money also motivates people, I think, to $100,000, don't quote me on that. It could be a quarter million, I don't know. I remember from watching a long time ago, about $100,000 would be the cash prize. That's a lot of money. You could do a lot with $100,000. You could take a vacation. You can go anywhere around the world that you want to go. But you get these guys who are all out of shape, haven't exercised in years, and some of them are former uh, athletes. And Daniel used to play high school football so he was a former athlete so he know he knows what it takes to to cut weight he knows what it is to exercise he know he knows all of that so you got these these people just working out oh and the and the calorie cutting i'm gonna off the top of my head i i think they cut their calories you got guys and, and women and, and, and men who are used to eating 5,000 calories a day and they're going down to 800 at first I thought it was 1200 but no I think it's extreme I think they're doing 800 calories a day that's my lunch that's a lot of your lunches out there too and not the healthiest of things so the hosts of The Biggest Loser, Bill Harper and Jillian Michaels, uh, they're hired onto this program. And over the years, the season as it's progressed, people have lost a lot of weight and they've changed a lot of people's lives. But what the uh, producers and the people who work behind the scenes don't want to tell you is that most of these people are gaining their weight back. Listen, here's the deal. If you're a guy or a woman and you're coming in there and you weigh 390 pounds and they show you, okay, and they cut all your calories and you, you live at this facility and they're controlling everything. They control when you wake up. They control when you go to sleep. They're controlling what you're eating. That's only a temporary solution to a, a problem that one has within their life. When they leave the program, Jillian Michaels ain't going to come knocking at your apartment to wake you up with the other coaches and staff telling you time to go run eight miles. That's not how that works. It's a television program. Their job is to entertain. Their job is to get advertisers to advertise on that program so they can make money. It's all a capitalist society that we live in and it's driven by money. Sometimes it's driven by greed. There was a... I want to say, not a poll, a study. Over the course of six years, 14 contestants were, were followed over six years after they got off the Biggest Losers. I don't believe they identified them. 13 of the 14 that were on the television program gained all the weight they lost and sometimes more. It is very, very difficult to break one's habits especially if these are habits that you have carried with you since you were a child trust and believe it's not easy during the seventh season when daniel is kicked off of the program but them telling him probably off the camera hey if you stick to it and you show us why we should put you back on television uh we'll put you on for season eight so he continues to lose weight and eventually he goes down from 454 to 312. That's 142 pounds. That is incredible. Uh, regardless of the fact that he has a dietitian or a, a uh, fitness trainer, that is something to be commended for sure. So Daniel comes back for season eight. So he weighs in, he's 312. And over the course of nine weeks, 
absolutely amazing. I want to say it's nine weeks. It could be even longer. But he had a, a dramatic weight loss. Uh, at the end of the season, uh, he got down to just a pound over 200. Absolutely incredible. 454 to 201. Man, that is fantastic. But like I said, that, if you ask a lot of dietitians, very dangerous. I mean, Harper, he had a heart attack himself. And he's supposed to be the pillar of health. Now, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't profess to be one. I don't pretend to be one. I don't know what he was doing, but sometimes things happen. Maybe he was overexerting himself. And while he was on the program, Daniel met a girl who he would eventually marry. Her name was Rebecca Meyer. So after leaving the program, like most, if not all, the contestants do, you know, you got to get a job. You don't, have, uh, the con you don't have the coaches coming to you, hey, buddy, got to exercise, got to work out. And that's why most people that go on that program, most, all gain some most or if not all their weight back plus more, the only guy that I can find that actually turned his entire life around was Bill Germanakos. I apologize if, if I didn't get that name correct. But he actually, it looks like he's made a career out of um, you know him losing weight and him getting others to do it as well. And... Other than the prize money, being on that show, you know, millions of people are watching that TV program and there's plenty of opportunity for you to maybe get some endorsements, um, make some money of your own, start social media presence, sell some diet pills that are made in China and hawk them to the masses. You never know. So you got a guy, Daniel Wright, very young man, in the prime of his life, losing all that weight, and you would think that, uh, you know, that would be a quote-unquote uh, new lease on life, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, sadly, this guy got uh, dealt a very, very uh, raw hand, and you see and you read these stories, and you cannot fathom the... I don't even want to say the, the terrible luck, but the terrible fortunes that some people have. And I, and I read these stories every day. So back in October 16th of 2017, I'm imagining that the weeks or maybe the months prior to that, Daniel's not feeling very well. Guys, again, I'm not trying to say what happened or what he did. But as a man, putting myself in a position of another man, when we get sick, when we're not feeling good, some of us can't be babies, but some of us, we're going to keep us not feeling good to ourselves. And I'm telling you guys, we need to stop doing that. Get checked. And maybe he's not feeling too good. Finally, he goes to the doctor because he's feeling terrible. Come to find out. He has leukemia. So immediately, I don't know what stage it was, but uh, he was diagnosed with uh, lymphoblastic leukemia. So now it's time to go on radiation. And eventually uh, he was um, sent into remission. And I'm sure he's feeling a lot better now, now that he doesn't have to do the whole um, chemotherapy thing. And sadly, very, very sadly and tragically, uh, the cancer would return and he would get very, very sick. Uh, one night he was not feeling good and he vomited and he noticed that there was blood in his vomit. So immediately him and his wife went to the hospital 
and for I think about the next month or so they would stay in the hospital and Daniel will continue to grow weaker and weaker and weaker and eventually he would lose his battle with leukemia dying I, I don't even think maybe it was a week after his 30th birthday Even though but a small part of television history, he is still a part of television history. Uh, the Biggest Loser is no longer on TV as far as I know. I think the last year that it was on TV was, I want to say 2020. NBC had canceled it maybe 2018 and then uh, the USA Network picked it up for a couple seasons but other than that that was all she wrote and you know for being a television program it did pretty well it uh, it was on TV many many seasons and that's pretty rare most television programs get canceled quickly Rest in peace to Daniel Wright. Uh, only 30 years old. Does anybody remember when you were 30 and Somebody once told you, like, oh, you're a kid. You, you know, you got your whole life ahead of you. And you really were a kid. And now that I look back on it, when I was 30, I really was a kid. And, you know, I see, you know, a lot of cemeteries, a lot of graves, and I, I see and read a lot of stories. And we should all be very fortunate because, like I said, Daniel was just given a, a, a terrible hand. And just uh, very, very terrible is all I can say, really. Do you guys think that the biggest loser will come back to television? I'm pretty sure it will. <clears throat> many things, many things that uh, go out of fashion always come back. And like I said, we always love a, a good story of redemption. We like to see people's downfalls, but we also like to see them come back up. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Sorry if I uh, <clears throat> ranted or raved too much, but uh, stories like this get me really interested just because of uh me having something to do with uh you know overweight and all that stuff anyways gotta go i'll see you on the next video hopefully anyways have a good one guys be safe out there god bless peace out